Hey guys, what's going on? This is Crystal Cherie, excited to be back on the Daily Gospel Network. You will be seeing live, on location, what God is doing for us, among us, with us, interviews, um, music, all kinds of amazing things. So sit back and relax and enjoy. I want to introduce to you Bishop Cortez Vaughn, who is in Kansas City. He joined us for my event called the Praise of Champions. Now that event was so amazing and powerful. It broke open ground in the city of Miami where I was, specifically Miami Beach. Um, he really spoke some prolific things about what God is doing in this next move. And he also gave us some amazing songs. So check out these clips of our conversation of my interview of Bishop Cortez Juan, along with one of his songs that he did for us. So the question is, how do we bridge a gap? How do we reach a generation that seems to be lost or disconnected. Uh, disconnect is a better word because they don't feel lost. They just feel like they're not connected to the tradition of things, the way things have been done. I believe, uh, like I was telling another pastor the other day, it's a matter of we do not change the word of God, but sometimes we do have to adjust the way we package it. So the word must stay the same. Truth is truth, principle is principle, but the way we package it can change. And that could be everything from our presentation, that could be our music, that could be uh, the way we go about reaching. Even in the Bible, when Jesus talks to the disciples and he uses a parable, he tells them in one story to go compel them to come, meaning that go do things that, that, that will attract them to want to come to the table to sit down to eat with you, to want to come to the table to sit down and receive knowledge. Sometimes when we're missing it in the church is we're trying to talk to people who we won't invite to the table. We're trying to talk to a group of young adults that we won't invite to the table. And then the issue is we talk to them and at them, but we don't have conversation. So we'll say X, Y, Z, but we never take time to listen. We never they take time to get their viewpoints or how they feel or what they think because sometimes the older generation feels like they don't know what they're talking about, but they know what their generation is seeking and what their generation is asking for. So I think we have to begin to have healthy conversations within the body, within the church, with our youth, with our millennials, and our young adults. And until we decide to do that, and it's not across the board, there are other entities that are having these conversations that are seeing influxes of young adults and millennials, but for those who are not seeing any change, not seeing any difference being made, not seeing any connectivity, you have to be able to invite those young people, those teenagers, those young adults, those millennials to the table, get their viewpoint, and then be okay with them not agreeing with your traditions. Be okay with them not agreeing with what you thought they wanted, but be able to listen to what they actually want and need. So I think that's a good start. One of the issues with the connectivity with young adults and uh, millennials and even teenagers is with the older generations of pastors, bishops, apostles, whatnot, we're not in the time where it's do what I say without explanation. We're not at that time anymore. There was a time in church where whatever the pastor did, they said it. I mean, whatever the pastor said, they did it. If the pastor said X, Y, Z, if the bishop said X, Y, Z, if the apostle said X, Y, Z, people just did it with no explanation. They took everything they said over the, over the pulpit to be word and be the truth of God. And then throughout generations, people started figuring out everything they said wasn't true. Everything they said wasn't correct. So now the challenge is, and this is where a lot of older leaders, I believe, are frustrated, is because they never had to explain themselves. They never had to break down the why. And this generation is big on the why. They have to have a why. Why do I go to school? Why do I need a, a higher education? Why do I need to come to church? I can love God from home. Why do I need to love you the way you love? Why do I need to worship the way you worship when I can worship God according to what the Bible says as long as it's in spirit and the truth and that is my truth and I'm worshiping with my, you know, so there's a whole lot of dynamics and until we as leaders 
get to the place where we're going to have to give them the why. You can't just say tithe because the Bible said tithe. What's the benefit? What's the benefit for me giving? What's the benefit? What's the benefit of prayer? Other than it changes things. What is it changing? Because if it was really changing, why do we have a pandemic? If you know, so it's all of these questions, and without us getting to the place where we can articulate our whys, when even as it pertains to the gospel, as it pertains to the book, as it pertains to the way we do ministry, we have to be able to articulate the why because this generation wants to know that three what uh, three letter word W H Y. Why? Why am I worshiping? Why do I need to come? Why do I? Why can't I just sit at home and go to five churches on Facebook on a Sunday morning? Because that's how easy it is now. This pandemic has given people who needed excuses excuses. So now we have to give them reasons of the why they need to do what we're trying to portray that God has assigned to call them to do. <laughs> God has done for you unless you testify about it. So today I have my daughter Kiara who is giving you a testimony. I asked her the question, when did you know you needed to be delivered? When did you know you need deliverance? We all got this testimony. Um, I figured out that I needed deliverance when I continuously was in the same cycle that would not break for me. Wouldn't absolutely, no matter what I did, I stayed in that cycle. But when I went before the Lord and I said, God, I'm tired of this cycle. I'm tired of this cycle of men. I'm tired of this cycle of partying. I'm tired of this cycle of just living the same old, same old. Like going the rigmarole, you know. Um, after the party is the after party. And do you get what I'm saying? Like that whole thought process, that whole mindset. I said, there's got to be more than life. And, and there's things in my life like I just could not stop doing on my own. So this is a testimony of her testimony. Mine is coming up soon. But watch my daughter's testimony of when she knew she needed deliverance and some of the things that God had delivered her from. Blessings. Check this out. Hi, my name is Kiara Torrance. I am from San Diego, California. I am currently 30 years old. And I just want to say I'm so grateful that God is restoring um He's deciding to recover our family's generation. So I'm going to start off with um, how he started to do that. Um, so about in 2017 or like around 2016, late 2016, I was um, going through a lot of difficult trials um, I just came out of a dysfunctional relationship. And um, first off, I want to say that I've always, I, I grew up in a church. Um, my family is Christian. And um, since I was a little girl, I've always kind of was close to the Lord. But 
as I got older, I started to veer out and do my own thing and try to figure out myself. Is is he really real? Because certain things in my life were happening and I would always question myself, like, you know, not question myself, but question him. Like, if you're real, why is all these things happening? Anyways, um, long before that, I found out that he was real. Um, but let me get back to 2016 because I don't want to get off topic here. So 2016, I just came out of a dysfunctional relationship with my child's father. Um, it was actually one of the worst relationships that I've ever been in. Um, and I just knew, for one, I'm going to tell you how it all started. And where I knew I needed deliverance. Um, when I moved down here to San Diego, um... <laughs> I end up going out one day with one of my friends and um, I end up meeting this guy and um, this is when I realized I needed to change. So I'm just letting you guys know. Um, I end up meeting this guy at the club. We went back to his hotel and, you know, he got into bed, started to undress himself. So did I. And then I don't know, something just hit me. And... I don't know if it was the Holy Spirit. I, I was, like I said, I was, I'm still going back and forth wavering. But some just said, like, what are you doing? This is not you. And I just start crying in front of this this gentleman. And so I just, I, I put my clothes back on. We didn't do anything. I put my clothes back on and I ended up going home. And I just, I was just crying and crying and crying and crying. And I finally got on my knees and I said, Lord, I don't know what's going on with me, but um, something isn't right. I don't know what that is that I just heard, but I know something isn't right. This isn't me. So I take it. It was the Holy Spirit because I have been baptized before. Um, so it was the Holy Spirit. You know, what are you doing? This is not you. So that night... Um, and it was like close to almost three o'clock in the morning. I said, I don't understand what's going on. Lord, guide me to what's going on with me because I'm not the type to meet dudes. I know I'm hurt from this relationship, but I ain't the type to meet a dude at a club and then go home and sleep with him. That's not me. Normally, before I found out about soul ties and having sex before marriage, blah, blah, normally I make a dude wait at least six months, at least. <laughs> That's the least. Or six months to a year. Um, but so the Lord led me to this book called STDs and, um, the book stands for sexually transmitted demons. So, um, my grandmother always told me like, you know, you battling demons and spirits, but I didn't believe in that type of stuff back then. So when I was reading it, the reading the book for, and it's crazy because like, if I go look up that book right now, I'm not able to download the PDF. But around that time, I was able to download the PDF, and I actually read the book. And it was just talking about soul ties and how, you know, when you have sex with somebody, like, their spirit, whatever they're dealing with, or whoever they had sex with comes inside you, and you wonder why you're acting different, you're acting like this. And so, um, so then that's when the Lord revealed to me, like, you battling some things. So I'm like... Well, I want to be delivered. I do not. I want these demons to come out of me. I want to be set free. I don't want to battle this spirit of perversion. I mean, obviously, I ended up finding out what kind of spirits I was battling. And I'm like, Lord, I just want to be free. So six months, like I said, this was around like sometime in maybe November 2016 or December. But for six months, I end up taking God serious and going back to church, reading my word, praying every night, telling God, like, I want to be free. I want to be free. Like, I don't want to battle these spirits. And so I stopped smoking weed. I stopped drinking. I stopped having sex. Like I said, I ended my relationship with my child's father. So I was literally by myself. Um, my friend that used to stay with me, she ended up leaving because there were some things. And I just, it was just me and God. But I was showing God how much I really wanted him. Anyways, long story short, um, as I was going to this church where my grandmother goes called Family Church and Garden Christ, um, that's where I met my spiritual mother, Crystal Cherie. And um, she was hosting this prophetic hub. 
right? And let me just tell you about the enemy. Like, so the prophetic hub, I knew about it. It was for like four weeks or so. And um, with the prophetic hub, I ended up showing up on the last day of the class. I was supposed to go the first day, but I just, I just didn't go. And that's because of the enemy. He didn't want me to be free. Anyways, I met her that day at the library in Oceanside. And um, the day that I walked in and I met her, she was talking about spirits. And I was, and it's crazy because you guys, I was going back and forth. Around this time, I was going back and forth in my mind, like whether I wanted to go to this prophetic hub. Like, I was like, oh, I don't know if I want to go. I don't know if I should. I was just going back and forth. But I ended up going and I brought my son in. And so she was talking about spirits. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is just what I was, this is what I've been focusing on. And I want to be free. So um, she asked me, you know, I told her, I said, look, I've been reading on things about sexually transmitted demons and I want to be free. And she was like, okay. So you want deliverance? And I said, yes, I want deliverance. Like today, if you can today, I want it today. And she was like, well, I can't do it today. We could possibly shoot for tomorrow. And I'm like, okay, I'll do it tomorrow. So she gave me some instructions. She told me to fast. And I did. And oh my gosh, like I've experienced God in a way that I have never have. Um. And, um, I'm sorry if I start crying. Um, he set me free that day. Um, I was able to, um, we reannounced generational, uh, not reannounced generational curses. We reannounced soul ties. Um, I repented for my sins. I, I said the sinner's prayer. But I also realized, um, in the midst of the deliverance, I was dealing with witchcraft, um, so it was a lot deeper than just demons that I had um, transferred with people, you know, having sex and stuff like that. Like, it was more than that. It was um, also witchcraft as well um, that ran through my bloodline. Um, one of my family members, family members made covenant with a witch. And... Um, so after that deliverance, I received the spirit of tongues, my a gift of tongues from the Lord. Because there I was speaking a language at the time, but it wasn't tongues. It was witchcraft. Um, but I didn't know. You know, I had no knowledge of what I was doing. Um, but, I mean, that day was one of the best days of my life. And I... Please, what I'm getting ready to say right now, don't look at me as a bad person, but it was one of the best days to be set free from everything and experience God's pure joy and to be empty of all the demonic things. I mean, everything. It was like, and I used to smoke weed. It was like, a high that I've never been on, but for God, and um, I would never forget that day, March twenty fifth, two thousand seventeen. I would never forget that day, and um, I just I just give honor to God and how He's been working in my life, and not only for me but for my family and generations to come. Um, but it was one of the best days of my life. I mean, better than when I gave birth. I, I, and, I'm, and I'm so serious. And I'm being so genuine. That I've never experienced pure joy. Besides when I gave birth to my son. But when God set me free. And literally broke off of. Broke every chain. That I didn't even realize that was there of my life it was the most wonderful thing in my in, in the whole entire world um so 
after that, I did have to receive a second deliverance. Um, because with the first one, we missed um, the generational curses. Um, but it was just more than just calling out. We, we break generational curses in the name of Jesus. Um, it was something that my grandmother had to repent um, on behalf of her father um, going to uh, a witch um, who actually took over the bloodline. They made, uh, like I said, a family member made covenant with a witch um, to take over the bloodline of the family. And um, because he wasn't here, um, she had to repent on his behalf. So, like, from March to August, I'm sorry, from March to August, um, I was, after the deliverance, I was experiencing a lot of, um, sexual encounters from demons, um, a lot of bad dreams. There was a part of me, I couldn't understand what I was reading when it came to the Bible, I, like I said, so like before I was reading you guys, but I, it's like I was locked out of knowledge. Um, but I think that had something to do with the witchcraft and the generational curse that was over my life. Like it did not want me to understand what I was reading. It's like just reading, like just reading words. You're not really understanding what you're reading. You're just reading. You're just scanning through. It's like just scanning through, but it's not resonating with your brain. But after the generational curse that was broken, I was able to understand the word. It's like the words came alive and I was able to eat them and so on and so forth. But um, I'm going to give you the back end of the story. I should have said this before. Sorry. Um, so my grandmother's husband, which is my grandfather, his mom went to a, um, a witch and... She tried to put a curse on my grandmother. So the witch that she went to told her to put this stuff in her food and she would die. And so um, my grandmother didn't know what was going on. She ate the food that, you know, her mother-in-law prepared for her. And um, my grandmother turned black, about as black as my shirt. And she's like a lighter, she's light-skinned. And um, she turned black as my shirt. <clears throat> and... They, she went to the hospital and the doctors was like, we can't do anything about this. We don't even know what this is. Um, you know, your daughter may die. Basically, that's what the doctors were saying. <clears throat> so her dad, um, who was my grandfather, um, took her to a witch. <laughs> you see where I'm going with this? Took her to a witch and um, he didn't care about anything um, I really don't know my grandfather's relationship with the Lord. Um, I know that his wife, which is my great grandmother, um, she she did believe in God, and um, she was also an evangelist. But I don't know if her husband, which is my grandfather, my great grandfather, um, was a believer of Christ. Um, so, anyways, he took my grandmother to a witch, and he basically told her like, "Hey, you know." I need to save my daughter like she's dying and the doctors can't even do anything about it. And um, so when he did that, um, th the witch basically made a covenant like, OK, I can save your daughter. But if I save her, I need you to I want to be able to take over your lineage. He was like, OK, I don't care what you got to do. Just save my daughter. So she did. Um, but she was able to take over the lineage. Um, but not for long. Until I came into this world. And um, that was that. So it, we, my spiritual mom had to do like a lot of studying and, you know, talking to different ministers, trying to figure out what was going on. Because we, we didn't know what I was battling. I, I just kept telling her, like, look, I'm having sexual encounters with demons and I'm having bad dreams and I'm having, I understand like after deliverance, the enemy tries to come and attack you, but it was, it was too much. And I started to be angry and I said, no, Crystal, I think, no, there's something wrong here. And so, you know, the Lord started to reveal to her, to me about what was going on and how we needed to repent off of what my grandfather did. 
Um, but I just I, like I, I just once again I just want to give glory to God um, because He chose me and used me because I answered and I said yes when my when He called my name to break the curse and um, now from this day forward my family doesn't have to go through that again unless somebody remakes covenant but I don't see that happening um, so that is the backstory of my deliverance and um, that is all God bless you. Thank you for listening to my testimony. I hope it encourages somebody. And um, I just want to leave you with this. Um, I would have never thought that um, I would be the one God would be using. Um how far I was from God, I didn't even believe in him. And though certain situations, it changed my life around to where I had to seek him. And um, hopefully any of you that are watching this, that um, this helps. I mean, this was hard. I'm sorry, you guys. I, I'm just trying to soak it in. It's, this was really hard um, to even talk about. Um, but I just, I thank God for him giving me a second chance and a second opportunity to serve him and do it with all my might. I'm not perfect, but with the Holy Spirit, inside me, guiding me, leading me. It helps a lot. And now that I know the truth, I was blinded. But now that I know the truth, it just feels good. Oh, man, I really hope you enjoyed what my daughter had to say. I know it was a lot, but it was powerful. You know, the Bible says those who call on the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. So salvation is not far from you. That's why I started this show saying God's got a blessing for you because your salvation is not far from you. Actually, it is right here. It is right there, right with you, right next to you. It is in your mouth. All you have to do is ask the Lord, say, Father, forgive me of my sins. I confess and believe that Jesus is Lord and that he was raised on the third day from the grave by the Father. One of us, God put me in my book so I can begin to experience success. Do you know God wants to do that for you? He absolutely does. So check this out. After you say that prayer, I want you to take, I want you to write me. I want you to let me know you said that prayer and I have a gift for you. All right. Until then. I want you to watch this video and know that we are praying for you because we know God has a blessing for you.